This is a S and A water pump motor from a chiller, and I'm taking it apart because something broke in the motor. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Um, so first of all, you may notice it has a circuit board backpack, and that's because this motor needs to run on a battery or on DC voltage, and you can't do that with a brushless DC motor unless you have some kind of inverter. So what this is, um, is actually a single phase AC motor that has been adapted to work on DC. Uh, there are only two connections, coil connections, which means it's essentially a single coil. Um, and this is similar to what you would find in a AC motor from like a, maybe a fan. Um, and it's neat because it has no brushes and there's actually plastic housing that completely encapsulates and separates the electronics and the coils and the steel from anything that, you know, the rotor that comes in contact with the water. So the magnetism whoops, is able to transfer through the plastic and the coils act on the magnet. Um, this is a pretty interesting magnet. If I grab my screwdriver here, uh, I've actually put some Sharpie lines. They're kind of hard to see, but this is be easy to see. So it sticks, it's a magnet, no big, but watch what happens when I slide it across the surface. It sticks only to certain positions, and there's four of them. Okay, so when they constructed this magnet, they designed it to have four poles, a north, so north, south, <coughs> north, south. Um, and that way, as they, this circuit is basically an inverter that generates a, a sine wave uh, that's going to cause a alternating magnetic field, and that will interact with this rotor. Um, however, since this FET is destroyed, I believe, when I turn it, when I give it power, it just basically overheats. Um, I disconnected the wires going to the motor controller board and actually just connected them directly onto the windings. So now when I spin the rotor, this will be acting as a generator. It'll produce a sine wave. Spinning it by hand, I can get up to about two volts AC. I wanted to use it as a generator, so I got a 10 foot pipe and made it vertical so that the water had 10 feet of head and it would build up pressure and then flow down into the, actually flow into the center and then spin. However, um, so 10 foot will be about five PSI of pressure at the bottom of the 10 feet. And that was not enough in order to get the rotor to spin. So then I went instead to the faucet which um, that's about 50 PSI that can be developed max. And it had a little bit more flow, but it still was not turning the rotor. So there's still too much of the, uh, well, the magnetic forces that you have to overcome. It's got this kind of clickiness. There's a special word for that, but it's just clickiness. Um, you have to overcome that, and once it gets going, then the motor would spin, but the motor was not designed to work as a pump, so you'd have to, might have to get more pressure in order to get it going or something.